Plutonium in films. Cool dude, sell it's like a piece of silver. Plutonium in real life. Maxim, we cannot let you to shoot a video about plutonium at our facility because you are a citizen of another country. It's due to safety reasons. Hello everyone. As you must have understood, this video is going to be about such as a radioactive metal as plutonium. It has been shrouded in secrecy since the day it was discovered and right until our days. The history of the discovery of the element with atomic number 94 began in 1914 when Glenn Seaborg and his team of scientists bombarded an atom of uranium 238 with deuterons in a cyclotron, one of the first particle accelerators. As a result of this reaction, they got Neptunium, which turned into Plutonium-238. However, this isotope wasn't susceptible to spontaneous fission and wasn't suitable for making nuclear weapons, which the government of the United States was in dire need of back then. Half a year later, the Americans managed to create isotope-239, of the new element by bombardment with neutrons of uranium salt, which, as later tests confirmed, was more suitable for nuclear weapons than uranium-235. The new element with the atomic number 94 was named plutonium. After the planet was discovered in 1930, Pluto, according to the latest classification, it no longer qualifies as a planet, however the element preserved its name. Back then, the discovery of plutonium was not even published in scientific journals because the created element was too important from a strategic and military point of view. That is why the research of this element was shrouded in secrecy both in United States and USSR. Just a year later, after the discovery of plutonium, there was launched the famous Manhattan Project in the United States. The aim of this project was to acquire a large quantity of plutonium and uranium and also to create the first atomic bomb. As a result of this project, Americans managed to produce 6.2 kg of pure plutonium. In 1945, the first atomic bomb ever, Trinity, was tested in the New Mexico state. Meanwhile, in the USSR, alongside American scientists, the Soviet scientists also studied plutonium at the Radium Institute in St. Petersburg. Uranium was also bombarded with neutrons in cyclotron. Later, Soviet plutonium was mass-produced as the first graphite nuclear reactor in Europe, A1, which was also known as Andushka in the city of Chelyabinsk 65, present-day Azorsk. Back then, during Cold War with the USA, production of Soviet plutonium was an absolute secrecy and was done in a hurry. Now this reactor is disassembled and only its frame remains in place. However, its construction led to the creation of all Soviet Union factory, Mayak. Scientists are working with radioactive chemicals at this factory up to this day. In the past, the first Soviet plutonium was produced at the A1 channel tube reactor, and later on, this type of reactor found a peaceful application and led to the creation of famous reactor of a similar type, RBMK-1000, which also produces a small amount of plutonium. Let's consider how plutonium is produced in these reactors. First, relatively small cylinders of enriched uranium dioxide are inserted into zirconium pipes. Concentration of isotope uranium-235, susceptible to decay, is roughly 3%. Pipes with the fuel form special thermal fuel rod clusters. These rods are placed into graphite blocks. If you didn't know, graphite is used to slow down neutrons, because uranium-235 decays only when acted on by slowly moving neutrons. As a result of uranium decay, there form additional neutrons, which can be captured by isotope uranium-238, forming plutonium-239, which decays into neptunium, which is also susceptible to better decay, and radiates an electron and antineutrino, and as a result there forms isotope plutonium-239. Theoretically speaking, it seems easy, however, there are lots of technical nuances, some of which are not disclosed yet. So, in 3 to 5 years, 
there form lots of fallout in the radioactive fuel and it prevents further running of the chain reaction. Such spent fuel also contains plutonium, which can be extracted from the nuclear fuel, and the rods are sent to be recycled. When removed from the reactor, irradiated cylinders with nuclear fuel are extremely radioactive and consist of almost all short-lived isotopes from the periodic table, such a cylinder can kill anyone standing closer than one meter away. That is why spent nuclear fuel is stored in settling ponds for a few years until those short-lived isotopes decay and the fuel becomes less radioactive. By the way, because of the high radiation of rats with spent fuel, we can see them glow in water with famous Cherenkov radiation. Water is glowing because of the stream of fast-moving particles passing through it. After sitting in water, spent fuel goes through a lengthy chemical processing. Just like in the time of Soviet experiments, the first stage of obtaining plutonium is dissolving of spent fuel in concentrated nitric acid. As a result of this reaction, there forms sediment in the solution, consisting of different radioactive elements. Of course, I don't know the whole process. However, the key moment of separation of plutonium from uranium in the process called purex is mixing of dissolved spent fuel with kerosene and treating it with tributyl phosphate and some reducing agents, for instance hydrazine. As a result, plutonium with the oxidation state of plus 3 rests in the lower blue layer and uranium rests in the yellow layer with organic agents. Of course, these are just basic stages. There are lots of them after such a separation. I also don't know the exact proportions, timings and other details. Nevertheless, plutonium itself is a quite colorful element in solutions. You can see these solutions in the test tubes with plutonium salts change colors depending on their oxidation states. Plutonium compounds have similar chemical properties to uranium compounds. Don't forget the fact that it was a simulation for the video in order for you to see chemical properties of plutonium with your own eyes. In real life, all chemical reactions with this metal are conducted in special radiation-proof boxes which have yellow lead glass, which protects scientists from high radiation of decay products which spent nuclear fuel radiates. Russian company Rosatom filmed some footages for me at the Mayak nuclear facility, but I'm finding it's hard to tell you exactly what kind of processes they perform. Besides, it is unknown how different isotopes of plutonium are separated in this factory. The final product of such chemical reactions is pure plutonium dioxide, which is a powder varying in color from raspberry red to yellow. Metallic plutonium can be obtained from plutonium dioxide powder. It is a gray metal which easily oxidizes in the air. Plutonium's appearance and chemical activity is very similar to that of a rare earth metal called cerium. That's why oftentimes radiochemistry students are taught to work with plutonium by using safe reagents based on cerium. The only difference is metallic plutonium's high density. After purification, plutonium from the reactor consists of five different isotopes, two of which are of particular interest. Plutonium isotope 248 is an extremely strong alpha emitter because it breaks down into uranium 234, sending off helium nuclei. Its half life is a bit more than 87 years. Plutonium's alpha decay can be demonstrated with the help of a such a plutonium calibration source. If we insert this plate with a small amount of plutonium 238 into special dosimeter sensitive to alpha radiation, you can see how quickly the number of impulses of this isotope's alpha decay is growing. However, if we place a sheet of paper between the dosimeter and the source of alpha radiation, it will completely block the alpha radiation. This experiment proves that alpha rays have a weak penetration power and are completely blocked by a thin sheet of paper. By the way, my portable radius scan dosimeter 
shows the same. Here an open dosimeter detects enormous alpha radiation and here the sheet of paper completely blocks all alpha particles. Pieces of plutonium-238 can significantly heat up in a confined space because of the active decay, sometimes they can become red hot and the metal can even burn. Another reason why that happens is because plutonium is the worst heat conductor among all metals. Produced plutonium dioxide will also be heating up. This property of plutonium has been used in thermoelectric generators for about 70 years. Self-heating of plutonium-238 generates more than 500 Watt per kilogram of energy, and all of this heat can be converted into electricity. Such generators are installed in some spacecrafts, for instance in such a Voyager and Mars Science Laboratory Curiosity. Plutonium isotope 239 doesn't heat up as much, but it is fitting for making nuclear weapons from it. The only problem is that metallic plutonium is quite fragile, which is why it is alloyed with gallium. After that, it's much easier to treat and transport it. As you understand, now, like 70 years ago, plutonium is mainly used for manufacturing atomic bombs. Here is a design of a new warhead B88. In the center is a case with a mixture of deuterium and tritium. It is covered in a layer of plutonium which then coated in beryllium for creating a powerful stream of neutrons. Then two lenses made of explosive material are attached to the case. Underneath there is a secondary charge from a layer of different uranium isotopes, which is connected to the primary charge with styrofoam, which creates plasma when there is an explosion. As a result, after coating the case with a reflective layer, which directs gamma rays from the primary charge to the secondary charge, we have a powerful weapon. Hopefully it is never used. So I hope that video was interesting for you. And if you like it, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see many more new and interesting.